traditionally from the, uh, is the scientific data source that gallstone formation is related to obesity, a sedentary lifestyle, too much fatty food intake and chronic constipation. Uh, in the Western world, mostly it's uh, more common in females and pe people who are obese and more than 40. However, in India, in some areas, especially the cow belt, UP, Bihar and such areas, the gallstones are extremely common. The incidence is as high as 12% of the population, which is like a huge load of uh, gallstone disease. In these patients, in addition to the factors which we discussed, like the, uh, the obesity, fatty food intake, sedentary lifestyle, there have been some mutations in the cholesterol metabolism which have been identified in our uh, research at our old, old institute which could be the cause for gallstones. Likewise, in women during the pregnancy, the progesterone hormone affects the gallbladder contraction so multiple pregnancies in women predispose them to gallstones and it's quite common that after deli delivery the women during the pregnancy or after the delivery they come to us with symptomatic gallstones. The typical symptom of gallstone is pain. The pain of gallstone is a very specific pain. The pain occurs in the upper part of the abdomen or in the right side of the abdomen. It radiates to the shoulder or the back. It's a sudden onset pain. It's usually after a meal in the evening hours, late night, early morning hours. It's a, it starts suddenly. It's pretty severe. Lasts for half an hour, uh, half an hour to uh, you know five six hours and uh, it's usually associated with vomiting. So this kind of pain is called biliary colic. Because gallstones are so common, a lot of patients you know, go to a doctor with an ultrasound report of gallstones and they have symptoms like indigestion, loose stools, uh, lack of appetite, fever and those kind of things. Gallstones don't cause those symptoms. They only cause the typical symptom of gallstones is the biliary colic, the kind of pain which I have mentioned about, the sudden onset severe pain. These attacks usually come once in two weeks, once in three months and that kind of problem. Patients who have symptoms, they can get complications. Complications of gallstone disease are, basically the gallstones can get stuck in the neck of the gallbladder. Once they move out, usually the pain subsides and that's like a short lasting biliary colic attack. But if the stone remains stuck, the gallbladder can swell up acute cholecystitis, the gall gallbladder can become gangrenous, the gall gallbladder can rupture causing pus inside the abdomen, the stones from the gallbladder can migrate into the bile duct causing obstructive jaundice, they can cause infection in the liver and they can slip down into the pancreas and cause pancreatitis. Some of these complications like uh, cholangitis, infection in the liver, pancreatitis are extremely serious and life-threatening complications. The, for example, uh, the risk of mortality in acute severe pancreatitis is almost 30%. And even if the patient doesn't die, the prolonged hospital stay, the multiple interventions and the morbidity of these complications is very high. Does everyone with every patient with gallstone require treatment? So like we were discussing, gallstones are extremely common in our general population. A lot of patients may have, you know, during a general health checkup uh, or a scan for some other problem, like in women for a gynecological problem, you go for an ultrasound, the ultrasound picks up uh, gallstones. So what do you do with these patients? So if the patient has not had any symptoms, the patient, especially uh, over 30 uh, uh, patient, has no symptoms whatsoever, he never had any uh, pain abdomen in the, for his, in his entire life. In these kind of patients, asymptomatic gallstones may remain asymptomatic for prolonged years. Studies have shown that patients with gallstones with no symptoms may remain without symptoms for 30, 40 years. So in these patients, treatment is not mandatory. We can choose to just observe the patient and do the treatment for gallstones only when the symptoms occur. But if you have a single episode of symptoms, like even if the symptoms, if you had a single episode of pain related to gallstones, let's say not six months back, but two years back or five years back even, once you have a single episode of gallstones, you become symptomatic gallstones. And the symptomatic gallstone patients are at a risk of complications like acute pancreatitis, cholangitis, gallbladder rupture and gallbladder infection. The incidence of these complications is four to eight percent per year. Once that means in the next every patient with symptoms will have uh, these serious complications within the next 10 to 12 years uh, likewise in younger patients like in uh, young children sometimes because of uh, blood disorders and some other factors 
they may form gallstones in these patients when you're very young like less than 25 and you have gallstones the likelihood of you developing symptoms and complications in the rest of your life is very high so in younger patients uh, we prefer to do the treatment So as of now, there is no uh, scope for non-operative management of gallstones. So a lot of people, uh, you know, in the uh, olden days, in the 1920s, 1930s, people tried non-operative treatment of gallstones. Medicines were introduced for gallstones. They would actually go in and cut the gallbladder out and take the stones without removing the gallbladder, or they would put a needle into the gallbladder and try to dissolve the stones with some medicines. None of these worked. So for example, a medicine called ursodeoxycholic acid, which is still available, now we use it for other conditions. It was initially tried for gallstones. When patients took it for two years, around 15% of the patients had their stones dissolved but the patients reform gallstones within three months. Likewise, when they cut the gallbladder or try to dissolve the stones in the gallbladder with some uh, injections, these stones reform. Subsequently, our understanding of gallstone disease has improved. Now we know that the problem with, like for example, in kidney stones and gallstones are as different as apples and oranges. In kidney stones, the kidneys are normal. The problem is the stones. So the size and the number of stones, we make a decision based on that and remove only the stones. In gallbladder patient, the problem is not the stones. The problem is the disease in the gallbladder. So if treating only the stones will always lead to a recurrence. So the, pro the problem being in the disease in the gallbladder, the gallbladder contractility, the contraction of the gallbladder is weak. So you actually have the stones which form. And so the treatment for gallstones world over is removal of the gallbladder. That is the only accepted safe simple treatment it's one of the commonest operations we do the gallbladder is removed with the gallstones and uh, it's a daycare surgery usually do we do the surgery in the morning by afternoon uh, we, we send the patient or the next day morning and once the surgery is done you'll never have your symptoms for the rest of your life and the risk of complications is also gone A lot of patients come to us as looking at the my stone on repeated ultrasounds where the stone size has increased and stone number has increased. Like I said, it is totally different from kidney stones and gallstones. In kidney stones, if your stone size is less than 6 millimeters, it can pass down the urinary tract and go out. So you can just follow up. While in gallstones, it is not the size or the number of stones that is important. It is irrelevant to us. A patient symptoms are matter matter. If you have no symptoms and you have 50 stones in your gallbladder there is no need for treatment we can just follow you up and treat you when the symptoms occur on the other hand if you have symptoms of gallstones and you have a single small stone in the gallbladder even then treatment is mandatory so the treatment is based not on the size and number of stones but based on whether you have the symptoms or not which age groups get affected by gallstones Traditionally, the, in the Western world, the gallbladder stones are a uh, disease of more than 40 years of age. People who are older than 40 years of age, patients who are diabetics, patients who are obese, these are the patients who have gone through multiple pregnancies, these are the patients affected. But in our Indian population, we have shown, see, demonstrated that because of the cholesterol metabolism, uh, a slightly younger group of patients, patients between 20 to 40 also can get affected by gallstones. The treatment of gallstones is laparoscopic cholecystectomy. It's a keyhole surgery in which you make tiny holes in the uh, abdominal wall, insufflate carbon dioxide gas inside your abdomen, and uh, under the ca camera visualization, the gallbladder with the stones is removed. It's a very simple surgery. It's the commonest surgery done, done worldwide. And uh, usually, like I said, it's a daycare surgery, and uh, it's very, fairly safe done in expert hands. So in some patients, you know, like I said, the gallbladder stones can slip into the bile duct and cause uh, uh, obstruction in the bile duct causing cholangitis, uh, obstructive jaundice and pancreatitis. In these patients uh, with gallbladder stones which have already passed beyond the gallbladder into the bile duct, they might need evaluation by MRCP and endoscopic ultrasound and subsequent treatment by ERCP if the CBD stones are present.
a lot of patients have this anxiety a lot of patients diagnosed with gallstones have this anxiety once they been advised treatment will my digestion get affected or my eating habits get affected after get, after get my gallstones removed by surgery so uh, because of that fear actually a lot of them go for alternative medicine which has no role in uh, resolution of gallstones and they delay the treatment end up in complications and uh, leading to a lot of unnecessary cost and suffering for the patients the gallstone gallbladder has a very limited role in digestion the gallbladder doesn't produce any digestive juices it only stores bile that is the only function of gallbladder between one meal and another it stores bile so this storage function is also done by the canal system of the liver that is the liver has intrahepatic biliary radicals and the bile duct which is the canal system of the liver which also stores bile so if you do an ultrasound for a patient after gallstone surgery 6 months after gall gallstone surgery the common bile duct which is normally 3 mm in size becomes about 7 to 8 mm that means the canal system of the liver takes over the function of the gallbladder so there's a lot of scientific data and literature in, on this that if a patient has gallstones and the gallbladder is removed it doesn't affect your digestion in any way whatsoever it doesn't affect your food habits in any way whatsoever you don't need any follow up checkups for gallstone disease for example we do a, a pancreas surgery or a cancer surgery the patient forever remains a cancer patient he requires dietary precautions he requires lifestyle changes he re requires regular checkup for the gall for the uh, cancer surgery or the pancreatic surgery but when you do treatment for gallstones there is no need to change your food habits there is no need to change your lifestyle there is no need for any doctor checkups in fact in the west after gallbladder surgery the patient doesn't come back to the surgeon for any follow up they just follow up with the local nurse because the surgery is not considered that major a surgery that it requires follow up so you don't need to adjust your uh, diet or lifestyle after gallstone surgery in fact with the sur precautions before surgery like cut down the oily foods cut down on binge eating avoid fasting all those are not valid after the surgery after surgery you can have a normal lifestyle of course in general we tell all our patients be it gallstones or liver patients every patient in general advice is to cut down on the carbs increase the fiber increase the protein content in your diet that holds true for gallstone patients also but after gallstone patient surgery there is no need to change your life um, uh, diet or lifestyle and one of the other issues is many times gallbladder patients have general complaints like indigestion constipation diarrhea uh, bloating and those kind of symptoms these symptoms may or may not be related to gallstone so in fact before the surgery the the treating doctor should have a clear discussion with the patient and say that the what the surgery does is it prevents the pain you'll never have it again in your life it prevents the complications most of the time the problem that happens is the patient expect all their digestive problems their bloating their indigestion their constipation to, to get resolved by gallstones these problems may not be connected with gallstones and so may not resolve in all patients after gallstone surgery those need to be separately evaluated and we need to take separate dietary precautions but all your abdominal symptoms may not be connected to gallstones